This is Milt Geiger, the Energy Extension Coordinator with Cooperative Extension Service. I'm here at the Adams property to discuss options for renewable energy. Now the Adamses are considering renewable energy because they pay a fairly high rate for electricity at over 12 cents a kilowatt hour and also they heat with propane which can be an expensive fuel source. Renewable energy can offer the opportunity to reduce energy consumption but also provide some price stability. After your initial investment for a renewable energy system, there may be some maintenance, but you know what? The fuel is going to be free. The sun's going to keep shining, the wind's going to keep blowing. So that's why folks consider renewable energy options to both reduce the cost and enhance their price stability. And in addition, there's of course some wonderful environmental benefits and a sense of independence that comes with generating your own power. There are several options that are being considered for renewable energy on the Adams property. One is wind energy. They do have a great wind energy resource. As you know in Wyoming, in many places, the wind really does blow. Another option is solar electric, also known as photovoltaics, where you generate electricity from solar panels. Wyoming also has an excellent solar resource, generally on par with what you see in Florida. They're also looking at solar thermal. This is where you actively heat hot water to provide some space heating, but also domestic hot water. And even down the road, they're looking at geothermal heat pumps, where you can both heat and cool a structure by using the ambient temperature of the earth and running it through a heat pump, uh, such as, as an example would be, it operates as your refrigerator does. So there are many options where you can harness the wind and the sun, which are really just solar resources to both heat and power your home. Solar electric, also known as photovoltaic, can be another option to generate electricity at the Adams property. Solar electric panels can be either roof mounted or they can also be mounted on the ground. Now, as the Adams already have an existing structure, it's very important to have a true southerly aspect and also make sure that you have good exposure to the sun. You cannot have any shading on your panels between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. So it's very important to have that clear exposure. So it could be difficult at the Adams property to find that with roof mounted panels. But like I said, you can mount them on the ground and oftentimes it's actually cheaper to do so. And it's fairly easy in Wyoming because we don't have to worry about grasses, tall grasses and shrubs growing up around the panels as rapidly as you would in other places. Solar electric has some distinct advantages. First, it's very unobtrusive. It can be, like I said, simply mounted someplace and left alone. There's no moving parts, it's simply the flow of electrons across the panel. They're also very robust, they can handle hail, lots of wind, and uh, they have a long warranty on them, generally. Most panels at 20 years will produce about 80% of what they did when they were brand new. That's a pretty good, uh, pretty good indication that these panels are reliable. Now what are the disadvantages? Unfortunately with solar, it's cost. Right now solar electric panels are quite expensive and in Wyoming where although it seems like we're always paying higher electric costs, we have generally cheap power. <clears throat> and solar electric panels can offer a longer payback period. Now people want to do it for other reasons such as price stability, you know what your electricity is going to cost, environmental reasons or a sense of independence, that those are all very admirable reasons. But having a good economic payback may not occur, occur with solar electric. But one thing that Wyoming does have, we get lots of sun. Our solar resource is actually on par with what you see in Florida. The reason for that is, one, we have very clear skies, but also our elevation helps. Here, as we're above 7,000 feet, we have less atmosphere, therefore the sun is stronger. That's why you get sunburn easily in Wyoming. Well, that same solar resource can help you produce energy in Wyoming. Another thing is solar panels are actually more efficient when it's cold. Like anything, as you heat it up, it ends up with more resistance. So solar panels can produce energy quite effectively when you have cold sun. So although you don't get a lot of production in the winter, you get more than you'd expect because we do get a lot of that cold sun in Wyoming. <clears throat> Another thing that we should address with solar is that there are also some excellent incentives out there. Although, once again, the payback may not be great, certain incentives can help bring it down. One thing is there's a 30% federal tax credit <clears throat> that can reduce the initial installation cost and equipment cost for solar panels. Also in Wyoming, you don't have to pay sales tax on it. There's an exemption. And we do get to net meter the electricity, which means that you get to spin the meter backwards when you're producing more power. And if you do produce more power in a given month, you get to bank those electrons for future use. That allows you to get the full retail rate for all the electricity that you're producing. Net metering is a concept that can be used with any renewable energy system that generates electricity. In Wyoming, net metering is available to all systems under 25 kilowatts. A 25 kilowatt renewable energy system would be more than adequate for most homes in Wyoming. 
But if you get under that size restriction, how does it work? The most important thing about net metering is it allows you to bank your electrons. For instance, when a renewable energy system, such as photovoltaics, are producing more electricity than you're consuming, those electrons would be fed back into the grid and go off and do work elsewhere. Now when the sun's not shining, the first electrons that you use would be quote unquote those ones that you banked earlier. So it allows you to take advantage of the grid as almost like a storage system. And the financial advantage <clears throat> to net metering for a homeowner is that it allows you to get the full retail rate for what you're producing as long as you're not at the end of a year producing more electricity than you consume. What I mean by that is if you produce a lot of electricity during the day and at night you use some, well, you're, it's just a wash. Those electrons cancel out. Now, at the end of the year, if you were to have produced more electricity than you used, the utility has to buy that power from you, but they have to buy it from you at the wholesale rate or their avoided cost, actually. And the avoided cost in Wyoming is around two to three cents a kilowatt hour. So you really don't want to sell electricity back to the utility because you're producing it for a much more expensive rate than that. But net metering is an advantage in Wyoming, and I encourage you to contact your utility to get the specifics on how they interpret the net metering policy.